At the beginning of Perfect Tunes, we meet Laura, who is working in a bar in the East Village and living on 3rd Street between 1st and A, which you'll be stunned to learn is the same street that I lived on when I was first living in the East Village in 2001. That's really where the biographical similarities between me and this character end, I swear to God. But that part at least gave me the tools to sort of turn the lens around the neighborhood and see what I saw then. One of my favorite East Village locations that's featured in the book is Alt Coffee. Laura goes to Alt Coffee because her boyfriend Dylan, who's becoming a rock star, has gone on tour and she's so surprised to get an email from him and she has to continue to sit there at the computer buying more internet time until he replies to the email that she sends. So Laura actually lives in a few different Brooklyn neighborhoods in the book. When Marie, her daughter, is little, she lives in Greenpoint. And then when Marie is older, she and um, her now husband, Matt, have settled in Park Slope, which is a neighborhood that they can't really afford, but they're just sort of like hanging in there by the tips of their fingernails. One of the Greenpoint locations that I wanted to make sure to set a scene in is the scene where Laura and Callie have a meet for a drink at the Pencil Factory, which is a bar on the corner of Greenpoint Avenue and Franklin Avenue that's like one of, one of these places that is just like an amazing constant in a neighborhood that's been totally in flux for the last few decades. I could imagine like what it would look like for Laura to meet her friend who she doesn't see very often and she has this shine this sort of like veneer of like charisma on on her because uh, Callie's become sort of famous she's like a touring musician in a band and Laura's a teacher who like teaches baby music classes instead of like a touring musician in a band I could just see everyone swiveling around on their bar stools to sort of like covertly look at Callie and make sure that they are right about the fact that she's like a little bit famous and then as New Yorkers do just like pretend that they didn't do that and go back to whatever they were doing but then like continue to like like slyly covertly like keep tabs on her the whole time that they were there and Laura just sort of ambiently being aware of that and that coloring their whole interaction. It's also just a good bar and you can get a grilled cheese sandwich.